Church. Thank you for your liberal giving, thanks. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. Giving honor to the Spirit of Christ, to my bishop and my first lady, to all the deacon brothers and their wives, our ministers and their wives, our ministers of music, our mother, Minister uh, Swaby, in our presence this evening. To everybody, everybody, yes, everybody in their respective places. <clears throat> Just a couple of reminder announcements. Let us not forget Attention Planning Committee. Sunday coming, we will have a meeting immediately after service. And this is to prepare us for our upcoming fellowship uh, dinner as well as our other events. Know that on December 9th is our fellowship dinner, December 25th is our Christmas service, and December 31st is our New Year's Eve service. So we're going to uh, go out the year in a bang. So we have several things coming up, so please prepare yourselves to be in these meetings. You've heard the announcements. Please cover yourselves accordingly. Be moving right along in the service. Um, we're going to call up Minister um, Bab, and he's going to come give us the scripture text that we'll be reading from tonight. Hallelujah. We'll be coming from 1 John 4, verses 1 through 10. When you, get, when you have it, please rest on your feet. one below believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world hereby know ye the spirit of God every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God and this is that spirit of Antichrist. Well, you have heard that, is, that it should come, and even now already is in, in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak. They are of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. This is was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son in the world that we might live through him. Verse 10. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he love us and he sent his son to be the poor petition for our sin. Amen. God bless the reason hey, of his word. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. God bless you tonight. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Amen. God is, thank God for being our source. He's our life. He's our everything. Amen? Amen. Thank God for you. Come out to service tonight. and show that we, we pray that God would add a special blessing to your life tonight. That God will add to your life tonight. That God will add to your spiritual walk tonight. Your spiritual life that um, so we call you and I are here that God will uh, mature us in his, in his word. And I pray that I, I would say something that will cause you to, to have statue and to grow spiritually. All right? I won't keep you long, but we do thank God for, I mean, I don't know about you, how you feel about it, but I give God thanks year round. 
I give him thanks year round. I mean, I know what Thanksgiving is all about. People are going to cook turkeys. I'm going to eat some of y'all food. <laughs> going to cook turkey and ham. We're going to do the big meals and all that, all that kind of thing, stuff like that. You know, and that's that's fine. Celebrate it with family. And but if we, but if you want, just want to keep it real, Thanksgiving, and we're going to give give our God thanks. I mean, God don't eat no turkey. God don't eat no ham and no and, and, and turkey and dress, dressing and stuff. But we celebrate this time of the season, and that's what we call it. But we do give God praise for David. David said, and that's where we get the song from, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Then David said, I will bless the Lord at all time, and his praises shall con continuously be in my mouth. Be in my well. In my what? My, not my heart. In my, that's right. That's right. So, uh, praises come out of our mouth. It flows from our heart, but it comes out of our mouth. Amen. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. So, if 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 there's not any thanksgiving coming out of your mouth, then there probably any thanksgiving that's flowing into your heart. Amen. Because if thanksgiving is in your heart, it's going to come out of your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. I was, uh, I was listening at, I was listening, I was doing my devotion at the time, and, and I was listening at this particular preacher, and he was, <clears throat> he was talking about, in the, in the midst of his message, he started talking about how, you know, how uh, most time in the church, you know, I say this all the time, most time in the church, it seemed like women, they, they outpraise men. I told them, not in my church. Well, y'all looking at me like that. And, amen. And he was talking about, he was talking about that if anybody, he was, it was a men, it was a, a men conference. And he says that that's why men are so, are really missing God because most children raise up seeing females praise God while the man over there acting cool. Amen. But he said that but he said that what well, I see in the Bible that in the scripture the greatest praise in the Bible was a man and all the man say Golly. And all the men say, Amen. all right. <laughs> that sounds a little weak to me. <laughs> yeah, a little weak to me, boy. Amen. Amen. And I think the man that was, was, was a praiser in the Bible, he wrote the biggest book in the Bible. And he wrote the Psalms. The thing had 150 chapters in it. Not that we didn't have women worshipers and we, hey man, we are my women's of God for praising God, but but men's of God, we should praise God with our hands elevated, with a loud voice, with the dance. If you can't dance, just jump up like a rabbit. Amen. And it's sad that you, your son never see you praise God. And your daughter don't see you praise God. And most times, that's why, man, you don't know how important that is for our sons to see us with our hands lifted in the air. Amen. Our daughters to see us praising God. That's why I believe my daughters right now are praises because they saw us praise God. Well, not only says Banks, says Banks, you know, I tell who <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> hey, our God is God. Amen. Amen. That boy said, that, that Bible said David came back home after God had given him the victory. David come back home. He's come back celebrating. And, and, and the women's in the streets, they, was, they start singing a song. Says Saul has killed his thousand, but David had killed his ten thousand. That Bible said David broke out in a holy dance. That boy took off his royal appearance. And he got down to the heathen, I mean, uh, 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 the serpent's clothes. He wasn't naked, man. He got down to the serpent clothes. And that's why his wife, Michelle, or some pronounce it Michael, 
And that's why she looks out and saw this king in the dirt giving God worship. Amen. And, and then the Bible says she looked, she looked down on him. She looked down on him because he was praising God. What are you doing down in that dirt? You the king. Amen. You the king. Stand up. Like some men do. Stand up acting like they all that. Man, when I think about how good God is to me, make me say hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Bible, the, the text teaches how to praise God. Let's offer up the sacrifice of praise with the. Okay. How we do it with the. Somebody talking about I'm praising him in his heart. That ain't what the text says. And it said offer up the sacrifice of praise. How? With the fruit of your lips. He didn't ask you to feel like praising God. He said offer up the sacrifice. When you don't feel like it, hallelujah, you still God. I still give you praise. Things might not be going well for me, but you still God. I might not be feeling like it tonight, but you still God. And I give you praise. Amen. All of a sudden, you, all of a sudden, you know, David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that within me. When you start blessing the Lord with your soul, your hands go up. Your feet go start doing something. Amen. Your mouth starts saying something. Because you blessing the Lord. He is our God. Amen. David said, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continuously be well in my mouth. Be well in my mouth. I can't understand. That. How many know where your mouth at? <laughs> Praise is going to be where? In your mouth. He said, like so cool. Have you ever seen them cool praises? <laughs> he says, Praise is continually be where? In my mouth. I will bless the Lord. David came back in that city. The text says he done come back. I think he done slew Goliath. Amen. I did my devotion at the time and go like, I can't preach that tonight. God talk it. I did my devotion at the time and when David slew Goliath today, man. Oh man, did God did God meet me in that place? He sure did. Oh my God. He come back, he come back in the city with Goliath's head. <laughs> he with Goliath's head. He done slew people and come back with his head. And that boy started giving God praises. And then, see, you ain't got to worry. Don't worry about all them haters. They don't know why you're praising God. And you know what David told his wife? He said, I know why you're saying that. He said, because you jealous. He said, the same God that gave me the victory over all of this. He said, he said, he said, now, he said because, now, because I've taken the place of your daddy. Ain't no do like your daddy did. Your daddy messed up. That joke start playing the dozen, man. <laughs> joke said, ain't no do like your daddy did. See, your daddy messed up. God gave him the victory. He started taking the credit himself. And God rejected him because he didn't give God no glory. He started thinking that he could do it himself. Amen. He said, ain't no do like your daddy did. And the Bible said the kingdom was rented from him. And David told him, hey, you talk all that smack as you want. Ain't doing like your daddy did. I know who giving me the victory. And if you think I praise God on the day, push your neighbor and say, you should wait till tomorrow, <laughs> next week, or uh, next time you see me in service. You think I'm, you th amen. I'm, I'm going to give God glory and give him praise. Can this say amen? Amen. I think the church ought to be one of the liveliest places in the, and, and saints ought to open up their mouth and give God praises. Can this say Amen. It ought to be hallelujahs all over the place. Amen. There should be so many hallelujahs in here till they scare demons out of corner. I bet you, I bet you demons come and rest up in here. He know what corner to go in. Your praise create an atmosphere. Ooh. Can I tell that neighbor, your praise create an atmosphere. Amen. Your praise is a change of the world you live in. You start praising God around your house, you want demons get on out of them. Can this sound amen? I mean, praise get rid of mindsets. Am I preaching good? Praise get rid of bitterness. Praise get rid of hatreds. Praise get rid of unforgiveness. 
when you start praising God, it start delivering you from bondages that been trying to hold on to you for years. Didn't it sound amen? You think the enemy don't know where to come? You know, you know the devil be here every time you come. He kind of hanging right here now. Because where good is, y'all know him in the script. But you ain't got to worry about it. Because your praise create. He ain't going to come up around you and no mister no praise. Amen. Boy, that's good preaching right there. Touch your neighbor and say, he can't break through my praise. Man, you'd be, you be surprised how the Holy Ghost be moving all over the sanctuary. But in your corner, you worry. You depress. And all you got to do is open up your mouth and give God some praise. Can you sound Amen. He'll free you up before you get free. He'll free you inwardly before you get freed outwardly. And when you start praying to him, he'll, he'll let you know that I'm going to bring you out of whatever you're going in. Can this out? Amen. And then people see you praising God and they know what you're going through. And ain't nothing but your praise done delivered you from that bondage that the enemy tried to put on you. Can this out? Amen. Amen. That praise is a deliverer. Amen. Amen. Death and life is in the power. I don't know how much we keep saying this. It's like some people just won't open up their mouth and get God no praise. What's wrong? The cat got your tongue? What? Can't nothing else take your place. Can't nothing take, look, look. Can't nothing take the place of your mouth. I don't care you dancing. You better open up that mouth and give God some praise. I don't care what you're doing. You could be beating the tambourine, beating the drum, playing the instrument, or preaching, but you better open up your mouth and give God some praise. That the life is in the power of your tongue. All right, you tell me, come pray over my house, bitch. You better open up your mouth and pray to God in your house. It creates the atmosphere. Kind of, like, I don't know how much I, I don't know. I ain't, hey, 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 the word just right. Now, if you don't accept the word, you don't go home and do the word, then that's your fault. If demons all up in the corner of your house, you can't go home and rest. Can't have no peace. Say amen. Sometimes I was like, amen, somebody. I know what kind of world we're living in. I don't try to be stupid, but I know this one thing. I know we're fighting a spiritual warfare. I'd rather have a natural thing to come in and take self. Y'all take self and, and, and you know, to, let, to, to uh, allow the enemy to come in and take my peace. If I keep my peace, I'm going to win it. Hallelujah. I said, if I keep my peace, I'm going to win. And the enemy, the Bible said, let the peace of God rule in your heart. That's the umpire. You remember that message? I still got that thing. That's the umpire. Amen. That peace called the balls and the strikes. That that peace, that peace gonna call it. That peace gonna call safe or out. Amen. The peace of God, when the peace of God in you, you just tell the devil safe. If you ain't got no peace in it, don't do it. It rules my heart. It's the umpire. Can this out? Amen. Somebody said, why you ain't doing it? I ain't got no peace in it. Sound good, but my peace ain't there. God, dog, let me stop. That's good. Amen. Amen. Man, that's what we ought to do. We ought to give God praise and say amen. I believe the house of God ought to be the loudest house in the world. I believe we should be giving God praise. Give this out, amen. I believe when you get to heaven, God going, you going, <laughs> I got you, my, my deacon brother. I like that. I like that when Deacon Banks said that. I, that'll make that part of my preaching. Some of y'all are going to get to heaven, and you tell me, this is like the Lord going to talk about, well done. He ain't going to be telling no, get on in there, get in there. <laughs> 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 so the Lord going to be standing there, doing like, get over in that corner, just get in, just get in. <laughs> he ain't did nothing. <laughs> I'm going to be in heaven looking at you laugh. I'm going to say, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to have no reward. I told you about the work. I told you to do it. <laughs> yeah, that boy tickled me that morning. And, uh, hey, and you know what? 
And everybody think the Lord, the Lord gonna be saying, "Well done, that good and faithful servant." You know, this gonna be, this gonna, this gonna be at the the beamer seat, the beamer seat of Christ. I know, some, I, I know, I'm losing some of y'all because you ain't gonna read the Bible this far. The beamer seat, the beamer seat is the place where saints is gonna get judged for their works. The great white throne, the great white throne. You don't pull to be standing before the great white throne. If you find yourself standing before the great white throne in Revelation, you miss rapture. You going to hell. <laughs> okay, okay. You just, you just waiting on your opportunity to get before God. And he goes, okay, that's all. That's all. He's just, he just giving you an opportunity to explain. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So when you read the scripture, that's what the scripture teaches. In Revelation, it's talking about the great white throne. In the book of, 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 of uh, Thessalonians, uh, Corinthians, it's talking about the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ, look, you ought to be writing this down. The judgment seat of Christ is not talking about whether you're going to heaven or hell. The judgment seat of Christ, next time you read it in the scripture, the judgment seat of Christ is talking about how the works you did for Christ on the earth. Amen. You're going to get rewarded when you get to heaven. Amen. And some of y'all are going to be thinking the Lord is going to say, well done, that good. He's going to say, get. <laughs> get on in there. <laughs> Amen. And so it, it, it's, 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 it's very important for us to understand that our praises under God, what it triggers, what it, what it, what it, what, what it put into play. It creates atmospheres, doesn't it? Amen. Uh, it does something for your heart, doesn't it? You get a real praise to God, don't don't it lift your heart? That thing, that thing is magical, man. That thing, I got, I can't, I can't, can't tell you no better, my son. I don't know how to tell you this, but, but it's magical. Ain't nothing like no praise. I'm talking to real praises. Ain't, boy, ain't nothing like, ain't, you can't experience, you can't experience no feeling like a real praiser. And sometimes, boy, real praisers, they be going through hell and high water. But because they know how to praise God. Isn't that good? How many of, just, how many of you just praise your way through? <laughs> if you would have lost your, don't make me start preaching. If you would have lost your praise, you would have lost your mind. Can this sound amen? You would have went batty right now. People would have thought you're crazy, but I kept my praise. And all the stuff that I was going through, it should have made me crazy. I should have did something stupid. But because I came to church and I remembered to give God praise, he kept me under control. Can this sound amen? That praise will change you on it. I know you think we just be up here, I'm just thinking, you know, thinking we ain't got nothing else to say, and everybody say amen, but all I know, my, my, my experience with praise has brought me out. Hallelujah. Okay, now, if you hear this word, and you know it's, it's scripturally right, if you hear this word, and you don't, don't accept it and do it, it profits you nothing. You can't experience the life that God has promised a real praiser. Can you say amen? And that's what God has promised us. And I, and I love praising God. Can you say amen? Man, I, so, many, so much. I'm going to say this and then I'm moving to my, 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 I, what I believe the Lord laid in my heart for us tonight. I'm moving to it. It won't be long. We're going and getting out of here. Okay? But, you know, every time I start talking about praise, you know, I was doing, man, this. This scripture, man, this scripture is great. Y'all keep hearing me allude to the word of God. I'm getting so much life out of the scripture. And I don't have time to be, you know, some, from some of the studies, I'm finding out new stuff. I'm finding out. And, and God told me that. And you know, you know, you know who was the, you, you know this. I've preached this before. It's in the scripture, 14th chapter in the book of Ezekiel. You know who was the praise leader in heaven? Lucifer. That boy, that God created him to be a praiser. Was, and look, look, and he was second in command in heaven. Ain't that good? Come on, think about it. I said he was second in command in heaven. He was over Micah the archangel. 
Michael had a job to do now. Michael was in charge of he was, Michael was in charge of keeping things in place. But Lucifer was in charge of worship. He was a praiser. You know what? See, God don't want you to, to take no glory from him. You, you can't have none of God praise. That, that, that Lucifer messed up when he tried to take God praise. He, he, he leading the whole creation in worship. And he looking at everybody bowing down. He done forgot about who created him to cause this worship experience to come on. So now he wants some of this praise. Now check what God do. Immediately, immediately I saw Satan fall like. Because God don't want nobody taking none of his glory. And when you don't praise him, you taking his glory. Isn't that good? See, when you don't praise him, you taking God's glory. Now look, he lost his position. Lucifer lost his position because he didn't give God praise. Amen. He lost his position. So you know what God did? But it's good. I got to do this quick and I'm gone. And so, so, so he lost his position because he didn't give God praise. And Lucifer thought that was it. You know what God did? God came down on the earth and picked up some dirt. Fashioned and made it. And made a man. And it, ain't, ain't God bad? God said, you thought you were something. But I'm going to make some dirt and show you going to take your place. God, God picked up some dirt, created him, and blew at him the breath of life. And that man became. And, and that man is the one that took Lucifer place. Touch your neighbor and say, you took Lucifer place. See, that's why the enemy don't like you. That's why he don't like you. He want to do everything in your life to keep you from opening up your mouth and giving God praise. Can they shout hallelujah? Oh, you can't tell me why I ain't winning. I'm telling you why I'm winning. I'm winning because I keep my praise. That's why I'm winning, because I keep my praise. And my praise ain't phony. I bless the Lord all time. I'm riding down the road. I'm blessing the Lord. People think I'm waving at them. I'm giving God praise. I bless the Lord when I'm home. I'm going to bless the Lord. Can they shout amen? You give God praise. I know some of y'all, I'm looking at some of y'all. Y'all act like y'all don't cry. Nah, you act like you've been smoking dope. You act like you don't know what I'm talking about. That one need my glasses on. <laughs> she, what was I saying? Y'all just made me messed up. <laughs> what I saying, Ebony? I, I thought my wish, but I forgot my point. <laughs> mm -hmm. God scooped up the whoosh, blew in the breath of life, and God told Satan, "Say this, who gonna take your place?" And so, what you think? He then he put he put. He put man in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. I'm giving you good Bible knowledge now, right? Yeah. See, you got to write down some of the stuff so you can go back and read it. He, give, he put him in the Garden of Eden. Only four people have been in the Garden of Eden. Well, Adam, Eve, God, and Satan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, Satan came in the Garden of Eden. And guess what? Satan wanted to take the territory back. Now, look, see, see, God put... God placed man on the earth to rule the earth. Because right now, see, see, Satan got cast out. He have no more dominion. See, now, what he did was he deceived man. God, dog, this good to me. He deceived Adam. Mm -hmm. He deceived Adam because, and, and when he deceived Adam and called Adam to end, he deceived Eve, and Eve told Adam to eat too. And so they lost their authority on earth. And so Satan had. So why do you think Satan come down and talking to God? Say, 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 you know, uh, told Jesus, say, all of this belongs to me. Because man done sinned and it fell out of place. Can this out? Amen. But how many know the first prophecy of the Bible? Say, yep, yep, Satan, you did all that. But he said, yep, the first prophecy of all the Bible. He said, the, the, a virgin gonna come, you're gonna have a child. And say, say, that same man that you deceive, he said, you gonna bruise his heel? But he gonna bruise your head. Cause every time you open up your mouth and praise God, you bruising his head. 
Can you say hallelujah? I say every time you open your mouth and praise God, you bruise in his head. Because Jesus came back and took back what the devil took from him. Do you not know as a man that came down? Even though Satan deceived the man, another man came down and got it back. And the man and the man name is come on, y'all, and you ain't said that that was too boring and the man name was Jesus. the son of the living God bone of a virgin Mary bone that lived on this earth and yet without sin and conquered Satan and took back what Satan took from Adam second Adam came back and took it back and uh, touched that name and he gave you the victory yeah you got the victory now Amen. Just like Jesus had victory, Jesus said, just like I was on the earth, so are you. That's good. Isn't that good stuff? And you be sitting right here, I'm so weak. I'm so weak. And, you know, I'm so weak and woe. Woe is me. Jesus said, I've given you the victory. Even when you don't feel like you got it, you got it. Because Christ gave it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. And he took it back, took it back, and he gave it to us. Can you shout amen? And it's in your praise. I says it's in your praise. I says it's in your praise. Can you shout hallelujah? If you want God to move, you start praising God. Can praise move God? That's good stuff, isn't it? Praise move God. My God, when you, get, when you run out of words, you don't know what else to say. I dare you to start praising God. Jesus. Awesome God, isn't he? Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what that's the season we're living in now. Season of celebration. Sometimes you ought to you ought to watch me, watch this. You know, I know, I know, you know, I know you say when God save us, and I know sometimes we have a message and we look back and say, forget about it. Forget about those things which are behind. And then reach forth of the things that set before you. I press toward the mark of a higher calling which is in Christ Jesus. And I know sometimes we say forget it. But you remember what remember what God told the children of Israel? God told the children of Israel, I want you to remember how I delivered you. Uh, there's something you need to forget, but there's something you don't need to forget. Can they say hallelujah? God did never want them to forget about that Red Sea experience. Can they say amen? He wanted them to forget about that nonsense they did when they, when they, when they tempted him in the wilderness. But he didn't never want them to forget about the Red Sea experience. He didn't want them to forget about the miracles that he performed. He didn't want them to forget about how he delivered them. And do you not know sometimes you ought to take a praise break and just look back in your life. And go back to a point in your life where you know you should have been done. Should have been over. And, and, and you can't give the credit to nobody. And you ought to take a praise break right there. And you ought to start opening up your mouth and say, God, I thank you. They don't even know what I'm praising you for, but I remember how you brought me out. Ooh, I better move on. Ooh, that's good stuff right there. Amen. You've been in a place in your life where everybody left you. Look, turn your name and say, good. <clears throat> I like them experience right there. Them kind of experience right there let me know that God was with me. People that you thought was going to be with you wasn't there. You ain't know what you was going to do. You ain't know how you was going to come out. Just that name said, but God, but, but God. God was there. Hallelujah. He don't ever want you to forget about them seasons. Sometimes when you, when you feel like you don't praise them enough, go back and draw on them praise. Oh my God. Can this out amen? Sometimes it's good to sit down and talk with somebody about it. And hey, you ain't talking about it just to be talking, but you going back rehearsing how God delivered you. Can this out, amen? And how God brought you out. Can this out, amen? To get me to the place right here, God had to do some miracles by them. God had to come down, reach down, and bring me out of some stuff. Can this out, amen? Tell somebody, I ain't here by myself. Man, God, I had to have some help. God help me in that. And every time you give God praise, you saying, God help me in that. Every time you give God praise, you giving him the credit. Can this out amen? Lord, I thank you for how you brought me out. You saying, God, you help me in that. 
Can you shout amen? And ain't forgot about how you brought me out. What no man do it, did it. What no woman did it. It was God that delivered me. And I give God praises. Can you shout amen? This is the time of the season where you just need to find an excuse to pray. <laughs> that, dog, that was good right there. <laughs> By the tape, Sister Bank. <laughs> no, that's it. I'm going to say it again because you asked me to say it. You, you need, this is a time of the season where you need to find an excuse to praise God. Sitting in the coat room, say, excuse me, hallelujah, don't go to jail. <laughs> say it under your breath. <laughs> if I was in the courtroom with Deacon John, he better keep me out of jail. <laughs> amen. That's what that text says, man. It's a good thing to praise God. Can you shout amen? Amen. amen. Receive the word of the Lord. Receive, word of, receive God's word. Open up your mouth. And change your atmosphere. Amen. All right, let's finish our text for tonight. Fourth chapter, First John, scripture that Minister Bout read. Thank God for Minister Red, all the preachers, deacon, brethren, everybody in their respective place. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. They hear y'all. I know no part right in this day, but it's, it's, it's more today. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. God dog, that's good. Underline that in your Bible. You can know the Spirit of God from the Spirit of error. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. That's why I'm so confident. You know why? I'm very confident. You know why? Because, because God has given us the ability to know whether that of the devil or whether it is of God. I don't care how it looks. I'm confident. That's what I try to tell you as a member, as a believer. You better get yourself into the scripture so you can know what the will of God is for your life. Even when trouble come up, it's a, it's a storm come, when you know what the will of God is, how many know you can keep your peace? Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Now, why would the Bible tell us to know the spirit of God if we couldn't know it? Hereby know the spirit of God. And he's going, to, he's going to tell us how we can know it. Hereby know we the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Okay? Anybody got a shout of that? You Don't worry about all these, all these people rising up talking about that's God, that's God, that's God. Now what that verse is text means that you, you believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You, it means this. That you know that Jesus was God in the flesh. If you ain't telling me Jesus is God in the flesh, you ain't of God. And that apostle, that apostle giving us information, isn't it? I don't care how good they sound. I said on something to you on the other night. And I wonder, how many in here, you believe that the devil can, what, can heal people? You know, some of y'all said, no, I heard something. But the devil can heal people. Antichrist, he's going to do it in Revelation. That's how he's going to see the nation. He's going to see the world because of, his, of the power to heal. Amen. But how are you going to know whether that, that manifestation of healing is of God or if it's of the devil? Mm -hmm. How are you going to know? If that brother don't confess that Jesus Christ is God in flesh, incarnated, that's God. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if them people don't believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin Mary and that he lived on this earth for 33 and a half years and he was God, well, hey, 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 even though he was, he was man, but when he spoke, when he spoke to storms and wind, he spoke as a man, but he, he, he had the voice of God. He was God in the flesh. He operated on this earth as a man with the power of God living in him. That's, ain't, ain't he bad? You can't explain all that stuff about our God. Some stuff you just got to leave it alone. You ain't no know till you get to heaven. How in the world God is going to be in the womb of a woman, yet still ruling the world? He bad. 
That's why he's God. He can take on a he can take on a man's body and still be God. And so John writes it and tells he's giving us he's saying he's saying hereby know we the the spirit the spirit of God. Um, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God. Jesus Christ that comes in the flesh is of God. That he is God in the flesh. Amen. He is God in the flesh. He is God. Sinless God. Sinless God. He never singing. He is God in the flesh. Anybody that says Jesus is not God in the flesh, that he was perfect, then they're not of God. Don't hear him. Amen. Is that plain? Okay. Wherefore you have heard that. What, what verse am I? No, third verse. Third verse. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. If you don't confess that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, then you're not of God. And this is the spirit of what? Antichrist. This is the spirit of who? Antichrist. This is the spirit of who? Antichrist. And it just, and it's, there's two Hebrew words, and I know we have the definition of Antichrist, and Antichrist means to... Um, against Christ. But there's another word in, in Hebrew that means to mimic Christ. Okay? That's what this word is. A lot of spirits out there trying to mimic Christ. Everybody's saying that they're the Messiah. I told you about these in the other night. Talking about they're Christ. They, 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 they're the Messiah. Okay? And so, so he says, many spirits are out there. And, they, and these spirits, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, mimicking Christ, whereof ye have heard that if it should come. And even now, already it is, well, in the world. Fourth verse, ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. You know, over, amen. How many know we overcome them spirits? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, ain't worry about being deceived. Mm-hmm. And amen. If the deceiver come, he better come correct. He better come more than doing miracles. Because greater is he that is who in you? Who in you? Christ, the Son of the Living God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world here is them. Watch this sixth verse. We are of God. He that knoweth God. Hear it thus. This apostle ain't pulling no, he ain't pulling no punches. See, because you got all kind of spirits be coming up around the church. And you got all kind of spirit. They're still alive today. You got all kinds of spirit. Look, look what he says. He said, We are of God. And he that knoweth, watch this. He said, He that knoweth God, hear it thus. He wasn't pulling no punches. He wasn't playing. He said, if these people don't hear us, then don't worry about them. They ain't of God. That sounds a little cocky, doesn't it? But how I many know you you know the truth of the scripture and you stand with the truth of the scripture and then then people sitting around and they listen at another voice? When you listen at another voice, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And a stranger, they were not follow so when people start talking about they're hearing other voices then you can bring up to the witness stand are you his sheep because other voices definitely going to be talking at you and John wrote a letter saying that John said if they don't hear us say don't even say they ain't of God that's, that's bold how many know it's time to get bold I'm going to say it again. How many know it's time to get bold? Maybe you be playing with the truth of the gospel and you be trying to pray with people feeling and all this. Man, if you don't hear God, then I'm going I'm, to bring the thing up to the window. Are you a sheep? Sometimes you got, you can joke be acting like they're sheep. And real goats. Because when you hear God's voice, all you can do is say, bah. That's good right there. I said, I said, real sheep, when they hear God's voice, they might not feel like it, but they hear his voice, but they're going to say, bah. Yeah. 
That's your voice. But you got that goat. All the sheep be saying, I had that goat to my butt. But, amen. And that's why it's so important for us to tune ourselves into the scripture. Can you shout amen? So it says, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. That's why you don't mess with people. You preach God's word, and if they're a sheep, they'll hear God's word. If they ain't no sheep, they're going about the business. Goat, 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 going to do what a goat going to do. Amen. Sometimes you be worrying yourself with people, and you think they're sheep, but they hard-headed as that flow. They can't hear God's word. They hear strange voices. Say amen. I don't even let my own self talk to me. Man, how many know your, your own self can be a strange voice? That, that's the dangerous boy right there. That boy started talking some nonsense. I look in the mirror and say, boy, you all right? Amen. He says, we are of God. He that, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of what? Truth. And the spirit of error. And the spirit of error. There's a spirit of truth that's coming around and the spirit of error. See, many people think because they're in church and they don't drink no more, then they don't smoke no more, they don't do all the clubbing and all that stuff. They, you know, they, call, they come to church every Sunday. But you got to watch out for them strange voices. And you got to tell God, God, I want to hear what you got to say. Amen. I don't, God, I want to hear what you got to say. God said my yoke is what? Easy. It might be a yoke, but God said my yoke is easy. It might be a burden when he say something to you, but my burden is light. If you disobey me, you ain't going to have no light burden. The way of a transgressor is hard. Amen. The way of a transgressor is hard. I want to finish by saying this, and I'm done for tonight. I want to finish by saying this. Can I say something to you? And I know you love God. I love God, and we love God. I was doing the story of... of uh, and, and, and it is so important for us to know the truth about who God is and God's word. And, you know, you got to go ahead on and settle this issue. You got to know that you're a son of God, daughter of God. Settle the issue. Don't just settle it. Settle the issue. Be, I, I know who I am. I'm a son I'm, or I'm a daughter. I belongs to him. That issue is settled. Amen. Now, once you settle that issue, now, I was reading the story about David. I want to say something to you. See, many people in here, they think that they're so insignificant. You think, you think that you're so insignificant. But can I talk to you about something? I don't, Jesus, I wish everybody would listen, but okay. All right. You know, you know, I can't make everybody listen. And I know some of the people, you know, they're doing Y'all doing the Facebook thing, but everybody don't be doing Facebook. It's sad when people bring their phone to church. You let what's on that phone get your attention. You might as well should have stayed home. So you won't be irritating me. And you get on the devil's phone. You in, you in the house of God, and you on the phone looking at a Facebook thing. That is so insulting. It's insulting to the spirit of God. It's insulting to God's spirit. It's insulting to the church of the living God. And you send them on the phone. You ain't, you put to be a, a, a son of God. You're a daughter of God. And you send them in church paying attention to somebody texting you. I don't know how people can do that. That's scary. That's, that's scary. And you send up on the phone. 
I would wonder if I'm, if I would wonder if I'm bony, if I'm a sheep or a goat then, if I do stuff like that. You ain't hearing God's voice. Who voice you hearing? Your girlfriend? I don't know who, who, who voice you hearing? Who voice is more important than God's voice when you come to the house of God? That you got to sit up and be looking at a telephone. Sometimes I want to take the phone and break them. Just break them. I hope God give me that authority. I'll be powerful. Y'all can't whoop me in. I have strength like Samson. I throw some of y'all all in the wall. And then pray them I break some bone and then heal you so you can't put the police on me. I won't hear you quick. I'll let it hurt for a while. I don't know where I get that revelation from right there. <laughs> People make me sick. What's wrong with you? The Spirit of God, you saved. And you, you don't have enough sacredness in you. You got to have a telephone in church. And ain't nobody going to call you for no late night shift and all that stuff. You just on the phone. Because you have no sacredness for God. You be sitting here talking about, I believe that Jesus down the cross. You better make sure you're a sheep. That text already I said that my sheep hear my voice. Sheep that we hear no strange voices. Sheep ain't no follow no strange voices. Well, that, just listen at me. Listen at me. All this scripture, this scripture is in the text so that we can identify who we are. That text said when Jesus go out and name them sheep, he named them sheep name by name. Just like you name your dog today, say, come on, spot. The shepherd named sheep just like that. When they came into the sheepfold, then every sheep had a name. And, that, and all the sheep in there knew the shepherd's voice. And if a, if a stranger came inside of that sheepfold and he talked, sheep run away from that voice. And that shepherd goes in, and that shepherd knows the name of every sheep that is in that sheepfold. Say, come here, Larry. Whatever they name sheep, come here. And that sheep move out. That's the scripture is significant of those of us. The Bible, the, the scripture declared when you get saved, we become sheep. Following the shepherd. I'll do that later. But it's important that we understand this. You got to understand this, that, that your value into the kingdom of God because God has saved you you got to stop thinking that you're insignificant. Every one of us in here, God is going, God, when he call you, listen to me, listen to what I'm saying. I ain't just saying this because I'm just, he call you for greatness. Every one of us in here that have a call of God on our lives, he called us for greatness. You know, you know, David, 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 David had to go to his destiny. David had to go to his destiny. And you know this, you know, David wouldn't have never reached his destiny if he wouldn't have, would not have obeyed simple instructions. No, 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 I'm going to drop this on you. I'm going you, we're going home. David, in order for him to reach his destiny, he had to obey simple instructions. What was his instructions? His instruction was, Go and get some meat and some cheese, some bread, and take, take this meat and this cheese to your brothers that was fighting the battle. If David wouldn't have obeyed the simple instruction, he would have never met Goliath. Amen. And you got so many people want to do great things for God, and they can't obey simple instructions, Sister Swaby. Simple instruction, come to church. Simple instruction, be in Bible study. Simple instruction. But we want, to do, we want to go cut off the head of Goliath when we can't even take cheese and bread to the brothers. 
if he never would have obeyed the simple instruction, he would have never entered into his destiny. He goes up there to take the sheets and the, and, and, and the cheese like, like, like he was instructed to do. Simple instructions. And when he goes up there, he hears Goliath talking to Smite. Who is that God? Who is that on you? Who is, if you, if, uh, uh, our God against your God. If you defeat me, we'll be your servant. Send me a man to fight. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He defined the armies of the living God. He talking about God. He talking about God, people. Huh, Goliath, Go, Goliath would let them have it. Who is your God? Who is you people? They going is God. Come on, we're going to see who's God. Send me somebody to fight. David got mad. David says, who is this? Now, what did he come up there to do? Follow instructions. Many people can't get, many people can't get reached destiny because they can't follow simple instructions. You don't know when your similar stretch is going to come. Might come on a Tuesday night. Amen. In order for you to enter into your destiny. And, 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 and while I'm reading the story today, and, the text, and I'm just sitting there, and while he, when he gets there, when he gets there, uh, and my last thing, when he gets there, guess who his adversary is? His brother. This is the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, and you want to go read it. His own brother. Matter of fact, his brother' name was Eliab. Now, see, Eliab, everybody thought he was supposed to be the next king because he, he, he had dressed the role, looked like it. He was tall, been in the army. <laughs> Sometimes you got to watch them dress people. Everybody that looked like they're good ain't good. Everybody that looks the part might not be called for the part. And so now, here he is, he's standing up, and, and David comes out there, and, and he looks at David, and he, get, he says, David, David, uh, he, David, frustrated. So he tells David, what you doing up here? What you come up here for? Who back there keeping them few little sheep you supposed to be keeping? You, you come up here just to be seen. And I know you. And you just want to be seen. Get on out the way. Go sit down somewhere. And I like the next part of the verse of Scripture. Next time you read it, the Bible said, and the Bible said, then David turned and started talking to somebody else. Touch your neighbor and say, you got no way to turn. I'm finna let y'all go home because I feel like, yeah, tell him, you got no way to turn. So all the people be running their mouths, you got to know when to turn. So sometimes people be talking, 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 talking. Uh-uh, you ain't help me. Turn to, amen, amen. Know when to turn. The Bible said, David, turn and start talking to somebody else. Sometimes you got to know when to turn your back on the enemy. You don't talk too much about the same thing. I don't try to get along with you, but you ain't working. Turn, 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 tell the neighbor, say, know when to turn. Sometimes you got to cut the voice of the enemy off. If you're going to finish your destiny. You're going to finish it? You got to cut his voice off. I ain't talking to you no more. How many of you have ever, ever had to do something like that? You loved him, but you got to stop talking to him. God got greatness in us. And look, David goes up and he meets Goliath. And now, <laughs> a little shepherd boy with a slingshot and a rock in his hand. Hey, see, you, you might not have what everybody else has, but I bet you God then gave you something so that you could fulfill the destiny he has for you in your life. Stop trying to be like everybody else. You just slaying in the rock. They tried to dress him up. Put him on saw stuff. David said, I can't use this stuff. And he, he saw Goliath. Now watch me. He entered into his destiny because he was willing to follow simple instructions. And I say unto you, I say to you, understand the principles of God for your life. Understand what God say. 
And don't put nothing above his principles. Understand the voice of the Lord. Amen. When God speaks a word, you might not understand what he's saying. But when you know that's God's voice, it's scriptural, right? You know that's God's voice, you operate in that word. Because you get, when you operate in simple instruction, you go, you're getting ready to go and fulfill your God divine destiny. Amen. Rest on your feet. God bless you tonight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Ooh, that's a good word. God's word is good, isn't it? Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. Slip that hand towards heaven. Let's give him thanks and reverence. Bless the name of Jesus. <clears throat> You're worthy of praise. We give you thanks and worship, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Help us to do like David said. Thy word have we hidden in our hearts that we might not be controlled by our sinful nature. So we bless your people tonight, God. God, give us a joyous Thanksgiving. As we go on dangerous highways, cover them, protect them. Help us to lift up Jesus even in these holidays. Give us a mind to testify, witness for the glory of God. Thank you now for every believer that's here. I pray, God, that your word will add stature to our lives and that we may grow spiritually in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, again. We believe that you are faithful, God. Hallelujah. And we give you thanks and praise and worship. In Jesus' name, with the man, amen. And let's confess to him. Amen. God is able to do just what he said. He will do. Confess it. We go home. He's gonna fulfill. That's right. Confess it. Every prophesy. Don't give up. Don't give up. On. Why? Cause he's able.